guys, thanks for tuning in. So home security is at the top of most everyone's minds these days with everything going on. And luckily for us, technology has been improving year after year. It's getting more affordable as well as easier for, than ever for anyone to kind of pick up a system for themselves to install, whether it be a video doorbell or an exterior camera system or an interior camera system, something you want 24 seven professionally monitored, whatever it may be, there's a bunch of different companies out there. So my need arise that one of our floodlights went out on the house. So I went looking for a new LED version of this floodlight that's been there for years and years. So when I went looking on Amazon, I found a bunch of different options and then I came across something from Ring. And Ring I know is already reliable. It's a great company. They have a bunch of doorbells that pretty much everyone has now. And the one new thing that I found they had is the Ring floodlight camera. So I went on Amazon, bought this myself and it does connect to a 110 to a 240 volt wiring and replaces your existing floodlight. You have the 1080p HD video with two-way talk. You have customizable motion detection, motion remote activated floodlight so you can control everything through the app. The floodlight is well on or off which is very nice and it also has that motion uh, capability with the different levels of the sensor. And then you also have snapshot capture mode so you can save all your videos, you can review your videos, you can share the videos, all that in a nice package with a real simple design. Two light bulbs or two LED bulbs and a camera hanging below. So I picked this up wanted to replace that floodlight. So what I wanna to do today is do a quick install and a setup for you. So if you do have one of these, or if you're interested in one of these, I'll tell you it works really, really well. And I'll probably do a review down the road. So link will be down below for this, but let's get to installing. So let's first take a look at the packaging and then we'll get her unboxed and get to the installation. So you can see nice ring packaging, kind of similar to a lot of other cameras on the market. Slide off this outer sleeve. All right, you got the nice ring box here. So nice packaging, you got a nice little foam piece up here protecting the camera itself. This whole part here actually comes out to reveal everything else that's inside here. Real simple, easy to unbox. It's actually a pretty heavy unit. Uh, of course, the camera being the heaviest part about it, but you can see full adjustability on the LEDs right there. Put that over here, nice and safe. Again, here is your mounting bracket. Everything's real nice and padded for transportation. Water drain, good to note because this is an outdoor unit. All right, you don't want any kind of water getting kind of stagnant around the base there. Right there. Installation kit, mounting screws. All right, different kinds. Comes with a nice little screwdriver. And get your wire caps. All right, a little hook there. So we'll talk about all that. And last but not least, we have our instructions. All right, little stickers there. Lights just control the floodlights. So you can kind of know, do not switch off. It's kind of nice. And I think I saw a little sticker, there you go. A little protected by ring sticker. All right, so that is what you get. Let's get this all cleaned up, take her outside, get her installed. So before you even get started on this whole install, you will need to make sure you already have a floodlight installed on your house. This one actually has kind of been kind of messing up recently. It's about 20 years old, so it's about time to replace. Uh, but you do need an existing uh, electrical box designed for a floodlight already installed so you can take off the old one and put on the new ring floodlight. All right, so what I'm gonna do is kill the power already to this. How you do that, you go over to your electrical box, find which one has the exterior lighting and just switch off the power. To test it, usually these have a little tester button on the bottom and it'll let you wave even in daylight, allow you to test the unit, see if the power is on, see if it's working, which is good because you want to make sure that it is definitely off. No power or current is going through the box when you take this off and put the new one on. So get yourself the proper screwdriver. Um, this is the only tool you'll need really because the screwdriver that comes with the ring should be all you need to actually install the ring, but you will need whatever the screw is to get this mounting off. So let's take it off. So now that you have the actual floodlight off of its bracket, you'll see these little twists here that are wire caps. All right, you should also see a ground wire, which is right here. This one actually is not attached, which kind of is a shocker, honestly. Uh, but go ahead and you'll find the two wires connected to the house, so these two right here. 
take these off, pull off the old wiring, and discard this broken old floodlight. So the ring floodlight does ship with the lights actually loose, and then the camera itself is actually upside down. So what you're gonna wanna do is grab the camera, spin it around, there's a little locking lug right there. All right, so the lights are on the top, camera's on the bottom. You can spin this little knob here. All right, and then you can kind of set these wherever you want for now. Once you get it on and installed, you can choose where you want these to lock up. Uh, but just to kind of get them from flopping around everywhere, go ahead and tighten these knobs here. You kind of see how this is gonna end up looking, uh, but it is fully adjustable, up, down, left, right. All right, so you see the camera is on the bottom there, okay? So, now first step you want to do is you have this mounting bracket right here, all right, with the downward position. All right, so these wires are gonna go through here and you have to find out where the screws go. And unfortunately, the screws are on the top and the bottom on this bracket. So you're gonna have to go through this sticker and up here like that, keeping this, these two screws poking out nice and level with the ground. All right, so we gotta find the corresponding screws that came with the kit that fits the two holes in the bracket. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at that right now. So take a bracket, run these wires through the middle like so, with that down arrow pointing down. Find out where these holes line up with the two screws. Go nice and flat, nice and parallel to the ground. This one should go right in this top hole right here. Get her started. And then this bottom screw right here is actually gonna go through this bottom sticker. And line her up in there if you can. It's kind of hard to see sometimes. Get them started. All right. All right, just get it kind of snug. It doesn't need to be like super tight. You don't want to break the plastic bracket. A lot of the newer brackets are actually metal, so this is just kind of a cheap bracket in there. Uh, but now you have the wires through, let's go ahead and get the floodlight out. So this little bag right here has this little S-hook right here. Now, this is something that I've been kind of needing in my life for a long time with heavier things like ceiling fans and other light fixtures that you don't really want to hold up with one hand and kind of brace it against the mounting bracket while twisting the wires and getting the wire nuts on there. This is actually a hook that hangs like that and it's designed to hang your floodlight. So I'll show you. You go ahead from the front and now you can hang your floodlight off of this hook. You see the little screw there, all right? All you have to do, run that hook in there. Now you can go ahead and hang your floodlight camera right off the bracket which allows you to take off the wire strips here, little protectors. All right, discard those. And all you're gonna do is match the wires, all right? So for the white and black, you're just simply matching. Grab your little yellow caps there. Twist until nice and tight. Just a nice sealed up in there. All right, and then do the black one. And I'll show you how you're supposed to do the ground wire, it's a little different, but typically you want to kind of twist. Luckily these are the same length, so you don't have to do any trimming of the actual plastic wiring cover there, but nice same length there, so line it up and twist. Yellow cap to the black. And twist nice and tight again. So I'll let this hook down for a second to show you guys that this copper wire right here coming out of your house is the ground wire, all right? There's also a little green screw on the bracket. And what you're gonna do is twist this copper wire in your house around that bracket screw, little green screw, and then tighten her down, all right? It's going to ground it to the mounting plate. And then you're gonna take the copper wire inside your floodlight. And of course you can go ahead and use the hook again if you'd like. And the remaining portion of the copper wire right here can now go ahead and be captured by another yellow cap. All right. So pretty simple stuff so far, right? I mean, it's not too bad. Pretty easy installation. Don't be too worried about it. Just like any other electrical appliance in your house, all electrical appliances have the similar white, black, and ground cable in them for the most part. Uh, so it's just like replacing one of those. On to the next step. 
All right, so now you're gonna take all these wires back here and some of the ones that are in your house, I would actually recommend tucking back into your house. All right. That's gonna help kind of make this fit a little bit more flush to your house. So tuck them back in there. Don't force too many of them too hard. You don't wanna break anything. You don't want those caps to come off. You don't want any wires touching or anything like that. Um, and you'll see that when you put these on, the little screw heads kind of poke out through. I can show you guys that. I'll loosen this up to show you. So this goes up, see a little screw head right there. All right, this is gonna seal around this rubber, kind of almost like foam piece here. That's a nice waterproof seal, all right, around your unit, your floodlight. And then you're just simply going to twist on these caps on both sides and it might help to actually point these floodlights to the sky to get them out of the way of the screw heads there. All right, there's about maybe just a little, maybe like about five or six threads poking through, so it's not a whole lot of real estate. And this doesn't really come with a wrench, but it does come with this little socket inside the handle itself, as well as another little screwdriver in there. So I'm thinking this might fit, let's see. Oh yeah, so that fits the head right there. So this little tool, nice little multi-tool that comes with the kit. So now you just twist it nice and tight. That little gasket in the back has um, a gasket on the, out, on the inside, a piece of metal where the bracket is in the middle there, and another gasket on the outside, so it's gonna kinda compress, all right, which is good. Nice waterproof seal. Honestly, probably better than the other flood that was installed previously. All right, and now you're good to go. So with the installation part, you're good there. Now what you can do is you can swivel these. All right, there's little collars on the end here. You can turn them wherever you'd like. All right, I'm just going to point them kinda like so, maybe a little bit down since it's a side yard floodlight. So get this one where you'd like it. I'm actually gonna point it down a little bit like so, kind of pointing out where there's a door is. All right, so you have some kind of visibility near where the side of the house is, where the trash cans are and things like that. So with the actual placement of the camera, you wanna make this kind of parallel to the ground, nice and level, you see where this little motion sensor bubble is, and the camera's up here with the two-way audio right there. This will allow you to make sure you have a nice flat, parallel surface to kind of uh, detect motion out to, it said, 30 feet or so. So that's kind of how you want it set up and it looks good right now, so let's go ahead, get the power back on, and we'll talk about setting this up in the app. And you can see she works. Nice, soft, white kind of light there. It's not too bad, not too bright for LED. Welcome to Ring. Follow the instructions in the Ring app to continue. So you just heard, that's kind of the initial intro to kind of get your Ring app set up. Uh, the light comes on for a bit once you get the power back on, and then the Ring kind of Siri voice <laughs> tells you to go ahead and head to the app, get things set up, get this synced. So let's do that now. So setting up the Ring app, you'll see you gotta create an account or log in depending on if you already have the app set up or not. Create an account, type in your first last name, which country do you live in, email address, set up a password for your account. You know, real basic stuff when you're setting up an account for this kind of a system and we have a profile set up for your actual camera. It's gonna have you verify your account via email, it's gonna ask if you wanna link your Ring account with your Amazon account for different features. Email verified, let's go ahead and set up your location so it knows where you are, where your home is, or where this camera is set up at. And once you type in your home address, it'll find you on the map. You'll confirm that, and welcome to Ring, getting started. Set up a Ring device. All right, you'll see the different kinds of Ring devices that Ring actually hosts. So you have security cameras, Scan the QR code or MAC ID barcode on your Ring device. Has a little help me button there, you can kind of see where these are, security cameras. Take a little floodlight camera. So she's actually on the back, which is kind of annoying, but at least the camera swivels so you can move that out of the way. All right, barcode scanned. And honestly, a lot of cameras have the scan feature now for QR codes. Blink, Nest, Ring, they all do it. Allow while using the app. Confirm your address again, then select where this is. Side yard, it's been installed. So once you do the two-step verification, that actually sends you a text message via your phone number, so you set that up. A lot of accounts do that now, kind of an extra security measure when signing into your account. 
which is probably good for something like this, which it's a, uh, based around a security system. All right, so now it's saying, please wait up to one minute for your flood cam to enter setup mode when the light at the bottom begins flashing. Continue to the next step. It's gonna to wanna to set up its own Wi-Fi network ring setup 25, and that's going to help you set up the camera to connect to your own Wi-Fi at home. So it takes about one minute to find the Ring Wi-Fi, then find your Wi-Fi, you log in, type in your password. So have that password handy, so you'll be ready to go. And you'll see right here that this is kind of the next page, fill in the blanks with the snapshot capture. So we're talking about setting up the camera, kind of talking through some of the features here. Got it. I like to use a microphone, let's be good for the two-way. And now you see kind of the setup we have. This is kind of the camera angle with the side of the house next door. So now you can use the adjustment collars and knobs to adjust the lights in the camera to kind of see fit. But this is the live feed right here. So you can see uh, that actually I had to tilt the camera down just a little bit. It was kind of tilted up from scanning that QR code. So make sure you tilt it back down and keep that motion sensor nice and parallel to the ground, nice and flat and level. So that way you can kind of get the full motion captivity that you're looking for when anything walks by or anybody's walking close to it. So you can see the trash cans out of the way there. There's the ladder I used, which is right below the camera to uh, install this camera. So you can see it has a good position and a good field of view there. Um, so of course this is great because it's gonna replace that old floodlight that wasn't really working anyways. So it's nice to have a nice camera that's a nice floodlight that's working and it has a camera. So there you go. So now you're gonna go ahead and test your internet connection, which is very important because you wanna make sure that the camera is within range of your wireless router. So for some reason it came back twice that it wasn't connecting to the wireless router, but now it says success. So who knows? Uh, so try it a couple of times. It does say try again on there versus look up, learn more to kind of learn how you can fix your internet connectivity. But if you do have a, a weaker signal and it doesn't reach all the way, you may need to check into some of the steps to kind of fix that. Um, but this looks, seems to work just fine right now. And our wireless router is probably about 40 to 50 feet away from this camera. And it's got, of course, a few walls in between the router and the camera, but it does seem to connect now. So I guess that's a good thing. Now this shows right here, you can grant friends or family with uh, access to the camera if you'd like. It looks like you do have a kind of a introductory plan uh, that allows you to record access videos on ring motion live video events for up to 60 days, share videos, professional monitoring, cellular backup, ring alarm, exclusive discounts. And now you'll see that it actually lists off there's any nearby incidents reported to ring, history, side, setup device, 30 days left on your free trial. So you do get a ring protection plan, which is nice, and you can extend that. Well, hope you guys found this step-by-step -step video useful. If you're interested in picking one of these cameras up, link will be down below. It's right off Amazon. And as always, if you have any questions at all about the install or the setup or the app, feel free to leave them down in the comments. I'll be happy to answer them. And of course, subscribe to the channel, like this video, hit that thumbs up, it really helps me out. Head on over to Instagram, follow us there, like us on Facebook for all the latest and greatest deals on the internet, and I'll see you guys in the next review.